21. When perspiration arises with effort, he should rub his body well. By this, the body becomes firm and light. 22. In the early course of his practice, food with milk and ghee is excellent. One sticking to this rule becomes firm in his practice and gets no tapa or burning sensation in the body. 23. As lions, elephants and tigers are gradually tamed, so also the breath, when rightly managed, comes under control, else it kills the practitioner. 24. He should, as far as is consistent with his health and safety, properly exhale it, properly inhale it or retain it properly. Thus, only will he attain success. 25. By thus retaining the breath in an approved manner and by the purification of the nadis, the brightening of the gastric fire, the hearing distinctly of spiritual sounds and good health result. 26 to 30. When the nervous centers have become purified through the regular practice of pranayam, the air easily forces its way up through the mouth of the susumna which is in the middle. By the contraction of the muscles of the neck and by the contraction of the one below, viz. Apna, the prana, breath, goes into the susumna which is in the middle from the west nadi. Drawing up the apna and forcing down the prana from the throat, the yogin free from old age becomes a youth of 16. 31. Seated in a pleasant posture and drawing up the air through the right nostril and retaining it inside from the top of the hair to the toenails, he should exhale it through the same nostril. Through it, the brain becomes purified and the diseases in the air nadis are destroyed. Drawing up the air through the nostrils with noise, so as to fill the space, from the heart to the neck and having retained it, within, as long as possible, he should exhale it through the nose. Through this hunger, thirst, idleness and sleep do not arise. Taking in the air through the mouth, wide open, and having retained it as long as possible, he should expel it through the nose. Through this, such diseases as gulma, pliha, both being splenetic diseases, bile and fever as also hunger, etc., are destroyed. Now we shall proceed to kumbhaka, restraint of breath. It is of two kinds, sahita and kevil. That which is coupled with expiration and inspiration is called sahita. That which is devoid of these is called Kevala, alone. Until you become perfect in Kevala, practice Sahita. To one who has mastered Kevala, there is nothing unattainable in the three worlds. By Keval restraint of breath, the knowledge of Kundalini arises. Then he becomes lean in body, serene in face, and clear-eyed, hears the spiritual sounds distinctly, becomes free from all diseases, and conquers his Bindu, seminal fluid, his gastric fire being increased, centering one's mind on an inward object whilst his eyes are looking outside without shutting and opening off his eyelids, has been called Vaishavi Mudra. This is kept hidden in all the tantric works.